Hello everyone, so it's 30th of September and I'm a mess right now. If you cannot tell, I have a call and I was supposed to finish these two books by the end of the month. I have half a day and I'm halfway through both of them. Uh, I think I still can make a good chunk of the way through this one, but whatever. But it doesn't matter because I said I was going to do the TBR tackle in October and there are 10 prompts so I'm going to look at it now and start the book tomorrow and uh, by popular demand most people seem to want a wrap up at the end of each week or something like that I decided that I'm going to do instead is uh, to make a sort of a vlog every two books so it's right now there are well, nine prompts, tomorrow there will be the tenth prompt, so I'm going to do ten prompts in October, so I'm going to pair two prompts in one video, because that makes sense to my mind, it's more or less a week. Um, so yeah, I'm going to watch the first prompt now and choose a book. Uh, if you don't know about what I'm talking about, I'll link my video down below. Basically, KD Books makes a readathon throughout the year in which uh, he puts out. You, you are supposed to choose 12 uh, books uh, at the beginning of the year, and then each month he has a prompt and choose one of those 12 books and you read it that month. And I didn't do that because my beginning of the year was crazy, but I decided to do it now. Um, I have my 12 books in that video, so you can watch that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to watch the first prompt now and choose my book. I know that some prompts make you change your whole stack, um, but I, ha I don't remember the, the prompts or anything, so um, I haven't chose the, the books based on the prompts or anything. So yeah, we'll see how this goes. Hi, welcome back. These are my 12 books. We'll do the prompts first and then I'll talk through what I've chosen. So, Roisin, I hand it over to you. Hello Kieran's Book Club, my name is Roisin and this is Hadrian's Wall. <laughs> Did she actually go to Hadrian's Wall for this? <laughs> this is the level of dedication that I wish I had. <laughs> oh, that was a long way to go for a prompt. From one wall to another wall. So, for this prompt, which I believe is the first prompt, I want you to pick a book that is either in publication date or in setting closest to either of those two walls. So the dates there are 122 CE and 1989. So, whether you are planning on reading a Greek myth retelling, or a 1980s classic, or perhaps a 90s memoir, um, there is a lot I think you can choose from. So, whichever of your books, in setting, or in publication okay. date is closest so, to either of those two dates. Um, I have to check then. <laughs> so I think in terms of publication date is Wolf Totem, in terms of location is probably Trespasses, and in terms of when is set is The Unseen World, uh, which is the only one that actually fits um, like it's actually in the 1980s so I think that's what I'm going to go with I'm going to go with uh, The Unseen World by Liz Moore which is also part of my ancient TBR of books that I have had forever and I want to read so that's where we're gonna go it's a little bit long uh, it's also 500 pages according to Storygraph uh, so it's a it's a way to go but at least it's shorter than Wolf Totem so yeah I'm going to go to for that um, let's see how I go or how I like it hello everyone so it's the first of October and I still have a cold but I think it's getting a little bit better and I have also started uh, The Unseen World uh, by Liz Moore I am about 15% of the way in um, and this is not what I thought it was gonna be, at least so far. Uh, so we have the father uh, and the daughter of the relationship, that's the main relationship the book focuses on, and the father is having some health issues that he doesn't want to discuss with his daughter, um, and I think the blurb said that he dies at some point. Uh, maybe I'm arriving at that point, I'm not sure, but the thing I 
I find really weird is that I thought it was going to be like a, this really quirky but heartwarming um, relationship but it's not really like that uh, I find that um, so he wanted a child so he went to a surrogate and had a child uh, she doesn't have a mother she never had a mother uh, and she like he basically educates her she's homeschooled but like not really at home in like in his lab because he's a very smart computer scientist kind of person but the thing that bothers me is that they do the things that he likes and it doesn't seem to be any point in the book so far in which he says what are you interested in my child um <laughs> so I find that very problematic I thought it was going to be a heartwarming uh, relationship but so far it's not like he likes computer science, obviously, so she studies a lot of computer science. And there was this point in which she said like uh, that her favorite books were The Lord of the Rings because his favorite books are The Lord of the Rings and she has said that so many times that she doesn't know if it's true or not anymore. Um, and I find that kind of toxic. Uh, so I'm not enjoying that relationship so far. And I hope that the book discusses that at some point uh, but yeah like so far it's um it's kind of itchy and <laughs> uh, as a relationship so we'll see how it goes i don't know maybe maybe that will be a knowledge it, it might be because that section in which she says i don't know if this book is my favorite book anymore because i just say it because it's his favorite book seems to suggest that the author is aware that this is not a healthy relationship, uh, but we will see. I don't know. We will see. Hello, everyone. It is 6th of October right now, uh, and last night I finished The Unseen World by Liz Moore, um, and it was um, it was sad, honestly. Um, all the characters were very sad. The relationships were very sad. None of them were particularly likable, but at the same time, they were um, somewhat interesting, and um, the the mystery so there is a mystery going on with uh, the father of Ada's past um, and he doesn't seem to be the person that he is but he has Alzheimer's so he's losing his memory and they cannot ask him because he doesn't know who he is anymore um, so there is that uh, at the end he he dies but it's most of the book he he just has Alzheimer's um, and there's all this um, turmoil in Ada's uh, feelings that he he's her father but at the same time he's also lying and he, she doesn't understand why and all of that and she feels like she taught her everything but I felt like she never quite came into her own uh, in the story like she didn't actually know who she was um, which is fine, it can be part of the story, but it's just something that I noticed. Um, so yeah, I, I, I enjoyed the, the mystery part of it. I really wanted to know what was going on and there was all these codes that they had to break to find out about his past and that was all fun. Um, I just, um, yeah, the character part was a little bit not badly done but just sad which is something I didn't expect so I think it's more on my expectations that um, I, I just thought that it was going to be a heartwarming uh, book in some ways and it wasn't um, I, the the ending was cheesy um, I didn't like the ending and the epilogue was just so cringe but um, but yeah other than that I did enjoy the mystery and the finding out things and stuff it's just not exactly what i thought it was gonna be but that's okay um but that means that it's time to take a, our second uh, book so i'm going to watch the second prompt and see what we come up with <laughs> i'm scared said let's find out what the next prompt is going to be say a very special maple syrup soaked hello to jill from the book baby. Hello, Karen. Hello, lads and lasses, bays and thems. I'm very glad to be part of your um, reading stack challenge for 2022. Can't remember what it's called. Too lazy to look it up. Oh. <laughs> Karen has asked me to be part of your February book picking 
video challenge. Your February challenge is that I'm going to give you an item from the Costco website and the cost of that item, the exact numbers of that item, is going to be the page limit for the book you must read. Now I do want to say for all of you international people, I'm in Canada, of course, Kieran is in Wales, if you're watching from all over the world. The Canadian dollar is, of course, um, worth almost nothing internationally. So um, if you want to do the conversion to pounds or American dollars or uh, rupees or whatever else you use, I don't know any other kinds of cash, but if you want to do the conversion, uh, be my guest. I'm looking at the Costco website because I felt like this might be a fun way to find what is a very um, cheap item from Costco other than, like, of course, the hot dog drink combo. I'm going to see if I can find something a bit cheaper. I'm going to go look at the grocery and household section, sorting by price, low to high. Maybe choosing Costco is a bad idea because the cheapest thing here is um, a six ninety nine bag of... Tortilla chips. Pantry. Let's see what the pantry things will give us a, a lower number. You know, <laughs> the pantry hasn't given us lower either. You know, I'm going to abandon Costco. This is a great idea. Listen, I was going to go out and do these in the store, but we're in a lockdown, so I can't do that. We're going to look at the Dollarama website. Do you guys have a Dollarama where you live? If not, uh, it's a shame because Dollarama is amazing. So we're going to shop by Winter Essentials. How about we do that? Do you know what I'm going to go with? That's our page count. It's going to be um, the hand warmers. They are $1.25 per unit. Um, that's two packs of uh, hand warmers. They're also amazing. If you live in a cold place, um, get yourself some hand warmers because they really do make a difference. So the page count for your February book is 125 pages. However, there are some caveats to this. The first caveat is if you have, a book have anything that that's short. 125 pages, you must swap the book, the longest book, on your stack for a shorter one. The second caveat might throw you a little bit, but if you only have books above this limit of 125 pages, you must swap the three shortest books on your stack for longer ones. And one of these longer books must be the one that you read for February. I hope that was clear, and I hope you're going to have fun with your book stacks for February reading. Before we go, here's my cat. He doesn't want to be here. Good luck, everyone. Enjoy your reading. Happy February. And, uh, oh, gotta go. Okay, um, that's, <laughs> yeah, I remember that prompt. I'm not excited about that. Um, I'm just thinking if there is any conversion in which it's going to be slightly longer than that, but not super long. Um, let's see. Canadian dollar to um, the euro and the pound and all of that is going to be lower which is not what I want I want it to be about double <laughs> um, that amount um, so what what is double that amount Alex oh yo yo um Mm, Pronos? Hello. No, that's seven. Um, mm -hmm. What else can we put here? Pesos, maybe? No. Uh, Reals from Brazil. Mm, okay. So a Brazilian real is 3.82 Canadian dollars. So 1.25 will be 478. Which I do have... Wait, what did she say about... Shorter books. Okay, so she said that if I have a book that is shorter, then I can swap the longest book. And if I'm doing it in Brazilian reals, because she said we can change it to any currency, that is 478. And I do definitely have smaller books than 478. So I can change my longest book 
to the shorter one and read that one. <laughs> That's that is a plan. That sounds like a plan. Um, I'm glad I got an our way around all of this. So then I will have to change. I, I'm pretty sure that Wolf Totem is the longest book in my stack. Yeah, Wolf Totem is the longest book in my stack. So that's going to go out of my stack. And I have to choose a book that is shorter than that. Um, let's see my books. <laughs> okay, so I think the one I'm going to choose um, as my um, shorter book is Summer Light and Then Comes the Night by John Kalman Stephenson um, which is an Icelandic book I don't know that much Alex I don't know that much about it other than the fact that it's uh, an Icelandic book and it was part of the book surprise uh, but I want to read it and I'm going to read that one and Wolf Totem goes out of my TBR, which I'm kind of bummed about because I wanted to read that one, but I guess I can read that one um, some other month. Um, yes, I'm glad that we found a way around that prompt. Hello everyone, so it's the 7th of October and it's uh, the evening, um, so I just finished uh, reading Summer Light and Then Comes the Night by John something Stephenson. <laughs> um, I'll put the picture somewhere. Um, but this started really well. Like it was very reflective and very um, poetic, and it was very beautiful about small rural life in Iceland, and I was really enjoying it. And then um, it, the misogyny just kicked, <laughs> and there was this guy in the town just talking about how much he loved his wife but he just wanted breasts and I just didn't gel with that <laughs> so yeah I mean the reflections and stuff were really nice but uh, I just couldn't get past that and it was sort of like the main storyline um, so yeah I was very disappointed by that unfortunately um, um, the good news is that I have finished it and I also had another of his books in my TBR so I have removed that from my TBR now because I don't think I want to read any more of that kind of thing um, despite the language and all of that being beautiful so yeah <laughs> it removed two books from my TBR um, but yeah um, disappointing disappointing so um, those are the first two books for the TBR tackle for me um, the next two books are going to be in a different video so so this is it for this video i hope you enjoy let me know if you like this rambly update kind of thing it's not really a vlog because i didn't really show you anything um but yeah let me know and until next video bye